December 20th, 2011. I'm going to show some parts, original parts from the Columbia BC. I made replacement for these uh, friction amplifier parts in 1987. I found my notes recently. Anyway, it's a friction ampli uh, amplifier. It works on the high amp principle that was invented about 1900. This is the world's first phonograph that works with a, a power amplifier. Not electronic, it's mechanical. So you have a rotating amber wheel. It rotates at a constant speed and a friction shoe. This is the original friction shoe. These parts are no longer usable, but it encircles that. One end goes to the diaphragm, the other end goes to the stylus. So when the stylus vibrates, it makes this rotating wheel tend to grab the shoe, which tends to pull on the diaphragm and then release on the diaphragm, and that produces the vibrations. So these machines were notoriously finicky, and after a year or so, most of them didn't play. None of them play today unless they've had uh, some very careful work done. This is the only one in the world where, uh, that I know of where all new parts were made. <clears throat> like I did this 25 years ago and it works just fine today. I'll show you a sample wheel. <clears throat> There's no way I could get amber. This is amberoid, a composition. They don't make this anymore. So I had to use uh, new materials. I got plexiglass round stock rod and just on a chance, because I remember what it was like to wash airplane windows, plexiglass, and polish them with a rag, they would squeak as you got the, uh, the, the plexiglass clean. So I figured it's got a good coefficient of a friction, uh, friction, but what do I use for a shoe? Well, I made a shoe for this wheel. I made it, this is a spare wheel. Uh, I made it out of Bondo, auto body filler. And uh, believe it or not, after that was cured and shaped, and I had to do watchmaking type work to, to, to uh, duplicate this, this hinged shoe. Okay, so I had completely new parts, and it plays just fine. Let's go over to the machine. Uh, here's a, 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 an abortive effort to make a friction shoe. I used epoxy and put black uh, dye in it, but it didn't work at all against the plastic. It was quite a trick because the fit has to be exactly right. Otherwise, this, this didn't make any noise, at all, any sound at all, but, but, uh, and, and neither would the amber because over the years it gets contaminated with oil, the slightest bit of oil, and it'll never play it again. And the, and the, sh the, the original shoe is made of vulcanized rubber. It changes characteristics with age. It no longer has a, the right squeaky quality. And that's sort of what you're doing here is you're, you're making a controlled squeak. It's a friction amplifier. Now let me set the, the lamp up a little bit here. Unfortunately, this is not very professional. I just want to make a little casual video. So I've got my snaky lamp here. That should be enough. Let's, let's start the camera again. Okay, this is the Columbia BC from the year 1905. They only made it for one or two years. And they made a fair number of them. A number of them survived the day, but they don't play. This one plays. Someday I'll make a video with better lighting. When I turn on the machine, the mechanism starts running. I think that cylinder is maybe loose on the mandrel. There we go. And when I lower the stylus, we're going to get some sound. Thank you. 
And so there it is, a crude demonstration. Works fine. Only one in the world working with new parts. Hope you enjoyed it.